When you die, your body immediately begins to change. Depending on how you die and your wishes, the U.S. government and mortuary service will prepare your body for internment. Stacy Holmstead has been fascinated with this topic for years, and she quite gently shares her obsession in this week's talk. Enjoy! Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Let's not believe that you just died. Okay, you just died, and there's two caveats here. The first is that you passed away peacefully in Arizona, and the second is that you're going to have a viewing in an open casket funeral, okay? So your heart has stopped beating, and what that means is that your blood is no longer circulating. So gravity is pulling all of your blood down into the very lowest extremities of your body, and you're turning kind of chalky, kind of gray, there's a very good chance that your eyes are still open. About three hours from now, your mouth is going to open because a load of calcium ions is going to dump into your muscles and force rigor mortis. You're going to become very stiff. And of course, the bacteria in your body are going to multiply very rapidly. Um, the decomposition process has already started. Now, where do you go when you die? It's an age-old question. Here's the answer, 7th Avenue in Jefferson. <laughs> office. Um, your wedding ring, your wallet, your watch, all of your personal effects, your underwear get put into a red plastic biohazard bag. They're stored in a safe at the mortuary that your loved ones chose. Only your loved ones are allowed to access that. It is a $10,000 fine if anybody steals your stuff, even your underwear. Um, if you had an especially catastrophic death, if you died potentially of a homicide or a suicide. If they don't know why you died, you'll be autopsy. They may also want to autopsy you if you died of a well-researched disease like Alzheimer's. They may want to look at your brain for research. And to autopsy you, they'll take blood and tissue samples, maybe some photographs. If they have to look around underneath the hood, they will cut open your skull, your sternum, remove your organs, weigh them, examine them, place them back into your abdominal cavity, even your brain. If your head is empty, it will be filled with cotton. And it's kind of the same thing for a homicide. They're not going to be laying on a slab for six months until they figure out who done it. They're just taking forensic samples, maybe some extra tissue, maybe some fingernails. They're going to use those samples. If you're an organ donor, that's great. You're going to Central and Camelback to the organ donor. <laughs> large organs, they can also use your skin, intestines, bones, veins, tendons, they use all the parts of the buffalo. Um, if you gave your body to science, you may be delivered as a whole cadaver to the research facility or the university, or they may cut you up into pieces, give your feet to an orthopedic school. Um, your torso may need to be ID'd later on, so if you've ever wanted to have that back tattoo or torso tattoo, good choice. Um, as we said before in our caveats, you are having a viewing at an open casket funeral, so you will be embalmed. It is the law. This is to protect the health and safety of the people who are at your viewing. And to be embalmed, what the mortician is going to do is pump you full of pink embalming fluid. It's mostly methanol, ethanol, and formaldehyde. It's going to displace your blood, push it all out. You'll be more clean and sterile. And then the mortician is going to do what's called setting your features. You'll have plastic caps with ridges placed over your eyes. Um, he or she will then wire your jaw shut, glue your lips. This is to keep your eyes and mouth from popping open and scaring the hell out of everybody. <laughs> you will have makeup placed upon you. This is makeup that has been used on every other dead body in the mortuary. You may not be that kissable. Um, you will be wrapped in plastic because you leak and then you'll be dressed. Now, if you happen to die of a particularly tragic accident and something got severed, um, if they can find it and it's in good condition, you can still have a viewing, open casket funeral. They're not going to reattach it. They're just going to place it close to the body, make it look If you're cremated, you're being stuck in the crematorium on extra, extra, extra high 1800 degrees for up to five hours. Federal law says that even if you die with a loved one, you must be cremated alone. You cannot have your ashes mixed. If you have a pacemaker, there's a company that does nothing but take pacemakers out of dead bodies. Why? Because cre um, 
Pacemakers explode and destroy Krim's brain. True story, people, if you don't believe me. Your cremains will be pulverized into a fine ash, which then, by Arizona law, can be spread over private property with permission from the property owner. It can be spread over most public property, okay? If you're going to the Grand Canyon or some big federal park like that, you will need a permit. You can be dropped out of an airplane over Arizona. And if you don't want to be buried or cremated, there's other options. You can be flash frozen in a vat of liquid nitrogen and pulverized into a compostable powder. You can be dissolved in a solution of water and potassium hydroxide, or you can be compressed into an attractive diamond. But you're alive, we're here, and it is now time for karaoke.